Thank you, Paula Gloria, and we're at Woodstock TV shooting this whole program, and hallelujah. And guess what? Now I'm going to introduce a new guest. He's our Woodstock treasure. We have a board of Woodstock TV producers up here. And this is George Conant. His show is The Conant Show. And uh, I... George Conant? Conant. Conant. Conant the Barbarian. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> wow. And what does he do again? Uh, I do a lot of things. Um, uh, uh, artist, musician, and writer, and uh, I've been a, an educator, uh, outdoor ed educator. I spent 25 years with the Seneca and Mohawk nations uh, learning from elders, um, the spirituality, history, and culture of, of the respective nations. And, wow, uh, that's and, beautiful. Uh, You're an honorary tribe member then. Well, I married a Cree, oh, so okay. I, I, I kind of married and I'm part Chippewa myself. I'm a fractional Indian. They've got so many well, ways yeah. of identifying it. But well, um, we have so yeah. many nations in this great country. Mr. Trump, you want to make America great again? Go back 500 years when we had noble dignity and a peaceful coexistence. Now, how about this thing going on in North Dakota? God bless it. The elders put out the fire. The treaty is made. But now the younger generation have relit a sacred fire, and they keep and they keep. They're going to make sure that treaty's not broken, and the water protectors are there, not being paid. Meanwhile, the goon squad is out there trying to think when Trump gets in, we'll get that pipeline down. It's so ludicrous. Yeah, well, it, it, I have some friends that are out there uh, representing uh, the East here, and. Um, it's let you know one of the, one of the things that I try to uh, share with my my audience and friends and stuff is is that this movement of oil from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico, right, has nothing to do with energy security or jobs or the economy for the United States or Canada. This is a a, a pure extraction of wealth, uh, in a way, to service um, the growing markets of India and China. Right. That's right. why they're and in Afghanistan. Our soldiers building a pipeline to China, and Miss Hillary, top diplomat, sold off these fracking and gas and right. oil contracts. Right. And she also profited with arms sales to her Clinton Foundation. Yeah. And you know the FBI. If the FBI investigates you or me, well, I think we're in trouble. How about in three or four investigation? They had to go with their tail between their legs because they're guilty too. Not only of that, but this whole Islamophobia entrapment scenarios and countless other malfeasance. That, now, there's good guys in the FBI and bad boys, and like in the, the cops, good cop, bad Frank, cop. Frank, let him finish his thought. And then no, that's but, all right. No, but no, yeah, I'm just yeah, rambling yeah. on, but I'm, I wanted to, you know, he this was is on what a road too. in America. I'm frankraven.com. And uh, we're talking with a wonderful man who is a representative of the native people which is important that we white folks should recognize that we're on Turtle Island. We're in the, we were, the native first people were genocided. So that, 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 that means that they're the spirit main, mains. We're looking back. They didn't 30, get us all. 30, no, 30, <laughs> 50, 100,000 years of evolution is not wiped out. Holy Spirit and truth remains. And the, the Hopi prophecy was that we would come of the, across the Rainbow Bridge into the fifth dimension, which we're doing now. Yeah, we're the fifth bypassing world. the fourth dimension of the demonic control of a karmic um, a need to, I hit you, so I'm going to come back with a black eye, or I'm a slave master, and then I come back as mm. a black woman or something. That's sort of over, I think, for the 2012. Uh, you know, end of the world, the end of the Mayan calendar. Mm -hmm. We've sort of woken up to realize that. And Jesus had it clear 2,000 years ago, and Buddha had it clear. I mean, it's all about love and balance and harmony and connecting with, with what's right versus what's wrong. It's not left versus right. There's always going to be a polarity consciousness to have existence versus non-existence. So we're going to exist, but we exist in harmony mm -hmm. and recognize our, our, our elders. And as the native people say, we respect the seventh generation, the, the future generation that we don't see as a wonderful reality 
as they say, we don't inherit the land from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. And we must respect that uh, to survive. And now this is a phenomenal happening in North Dakota where all the tribes are gathering and environmentalists are gathering and people are standing at Standing Rock. Oh, veterans are standing up for them too, veterans. Vet the veterans have veterans gone there are. and it's like it's better than them committing suicide and freaking out. They got something to live for and die for peacefully without a weapon. And this appeals to their nobility, their spirit and the great holiness of Martin Luther King or Nelson Mandela or, any, or Gandhi, any great leader that changed the nation, mm. shifted consciousness, and indeed it was one person who was able to just say, whoa, wait a second, what's going on? Suddenly everyone caught on to, yeah, you know what? We've been going in the wrong direction. You, you got it going on, man, you know the deal. And so, as Margaret Mead said, a small group of people can change the world. In fact, that's all that's ever, how it's ever been, that you take a group like our founding fathers of America. They wrote the Constitution and they decided to make America United yeah, States now, of now, America. Now okay. can I can I can I interject here? Oh well sure. All right, so let's let's talk about that for a second. Now it was, it was a probably March nineteen eighty three National Geographic had a very big spread on the founding fathers, I uh, uh, Jefferson, Hamilton uh, and um, Franklin and these fellows, right? That that group of guys uh, actually had engaged with the Haudenosaunee, the Five Nation Confederacy, the, the Seneca on the Western Door, the, the Mohawk of the Eastern Door, and the center fire is the Onondaga, and then you have the Little Brothers, the Cayuga, and the Oneida. How about right? the Iroquois? That is the Iroquois Confederacy. All right. The Five Nations, it's called the Haudenosaunee. Okay. And it's like five arrows, and those five arrows, when they're held together, you can't break them. But if you separate them, you can break each arrow. So they stay together as a, as a, as a as a, as a group, as a unity, and uh -huh. as a political system. Now, the, now, they were the bow and arrow, the Stone Age, up against the, 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 the lead shot and gunpowder. And in, and in spite of the overwhelming power of the uh, colonial and, um, and uh, European armies, the Dutch and, the, and primarily the Dutch and the French and the English, they held together in spite of it all to this day. They have treaties, and you only make treaties with nations. And some of the earliest treaties are between the Haudenosaunee, the Five Nation Confederacy, and the Queen of England. So you're going back to the 1600s, that identifies them as the rightful owners and of Turtle Island. But but when it comes to our Constitution and our formation of our of our United States of America, it was many many lessons that these founding fathers you just brought up had. They went and they sat in Grand Council with the leaders of the Haudenosaunee and learned what the vote was. Because there was no vote prior to, to our yeah, representatives. they were feudal lords they were, coming they were, from monarchies. You, were, you had monarchies, okay, very good, okay. So they learned about how a government by consensus, which is the slowest moving government there is, because everyone must agree. So it was very frustrating to make treaties with the Haudenosaunee because the Haudenosaunee could take years to make a decision. <laughs> and one of their decision is no decision because no decision is still a decision, <laughs> you see. And, and, and they learned how each of us have a voice. Right. And that translated to a vote. Well, what about 350 million people in the United States of America as we know it today? Now... Regarding the most recent election, the majority of people did not vote for Hitler or Trump her Trump card. You know, I'm sorry. We look forward to a new America under Trump, and and I'm thinking, well, I keep praying and visualizing the pajama yeah, brigade. Yeah, I, I have surrounded himself with generals, but his kids are going to say, "Hey, Grandpa, look what's going on in Sweden or Norway. You know, mm -hmm. Sweden's buying fuel as garbage." And he's going to have to say, yeah, good night, kids, mm -hmm. and sleep on that, on the truth that's going on around the world. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, we, we digressed into a couple of directions there. 
<laughs> uh, well, we just suffered a major shock, you know. We're all burning. Well, no, you know, We're burning our bus. We played it an honest man, good old Bernie Sanders, well, the Green Party. And next thing he says, give it to Hillary. Oh, wait a second. She did she the one that well, there is, all there, the fracking there, contracts? Well, there is, there, there is the, the Clinton body count. And, and, <laughs> oh, the, yeah. and the leader of the FBI and... And, and and uh, and anybody who has tried suing the the Clinton uh, campaign, you know, during this the, all the 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 folder all that was going on with the vote being flipped from Bernie to uh, Clinton when when Bernie certainly had seventy percent of the vote. I, I, I oh, think yeah. and certainly in California, but it may have been across the board. Of course, and you and know, it's not left or so, right. It's right so or wrong. you know. With with uh, with with the uh, unexpected deaths of, of the various people um, bringing suit against the DNC and the Hillary campaign, yeah. I think I think Bernie is ha- had uh, had a choice was given to him. Absolutely. You see, so so I don't I don't I you know a lot of people are mad at Bernie for bowing down, but I don't blame him for a bit because he's. Are you kidding? They he doesn't. Got to say, Take a socialist revolution. Only thing we're killed, we're fighting here. What are you yeah. like your kids? You yeah. know. I remember uh, Ted Gunderson. I was told you know Ted. I don't know him, but well, his, I'm, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the research. He was head of the FBI on the right. Olympics, and a lot of they investigated pedophilia and all kinds of wonderful stuff. He was a very smart man, a chief of the FBI. Recently died? No, he's, he's, he's dead still, now. He's God did, bless him in yeah. the world of spirit. Yeah. But anyway, he handed me a document about this thick that was, well, We'll get into the, this pedophilia thing that they used to blackmail politicians, but it was Vince Foster's um, in-house report. Hmm. Now, the partner in Clinton's law firm, hmm, there was no dust on his shoes. He was found in the park right before he was supposed to testify to Congress. And uh, he was shot like in, in, in the head, and he had this... Uh, you know, no, no, no footprints. It was like obviously he was carried into the park. He was the her partner. She was the first lady. He said, "I'm not going down." You know, without testifying. You know, and so suddenly, right before he was suicided, he said, "Oh, the pressure was too much," and him and a lot of other people. I think John Ash and a few other people, many people around the Clintons are. Well, when she was told about Muammar Gaddafi, the King of Kings, who wrote the Green Book of Socialism, that he was dead, she cackled like a hyena. Yeah, yeah. So even if we don't like somebody and they're supposedly our enemy or whatever, and they're dead, you know, you think, well, God rest their soul, and God, you know, we'll move on, you know, etc. <laughs> yeah. Now that that mindset is evil. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Right away, the triggers. Absolutely. Like you're thinking, oh my God, Hillary, please, she's the war. You know the the the, the policy makes. She was a lawyer, so while cokehead and the sex fiend Bill Clinton's in the White House doing his little speeches, you know she was the policy wonk, setting in motion the private jails, which has resulted in Black Lives Matter and penal code reform, and then marching the streets. Yeah. Bernie was a lone white guy with all these black people, you know, marching for civil rights, Martin Luther King, and she was a Goldwater gal. I- and Arkansas, it likes to get rid of them black folks. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's a number of things that you're touching on here. One, one is uh, the Clinton um, uh, good old boy club, you, you might say, from from the Arkansas days when she was uh, a young lawyer. Uh, were very largely involved with the engineering of, of uh, the SNL scandal. That yeah. that that. Um, I'm not sure when that. I'm not. I think that was in the 1980s, right? Yeah. And then yeah, and the, and, the apps and then in the 80s, they're bringing the cocaine in from Central America. I'm mm-hmm. in C-Corp. He brought the heroin in from Laos and Kemba, and then he turns around and he brings the cocaine in from Central America. Yeah. You know, Bill was one of the few governors they could find a nice big red nose to get that cocaine, yeah. and no problem. That's why BCCI uh, bank fell apart from money laundering. But well, we know this. One, I mean, this one nightmare at a time. <laughs> laundering money and bringing drugs in. And well, in the narco bandito game. Yeah. Um, Stay on Gunderson. So, so yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that, let, let, let me fast forward then all the way to, to today, which is um, the whole program of the mainstream media uh, attempting to debunk alternative media for um, reporting, essentially reporting on the Pizzagate. 
Pizzagate. Oh okay. This so, theory which is we, we, over and over. Yeah. Sex well, is never going to get old, folks. I'm sorry. And those people in power are perverted. Uh, well, it's 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 a, a part of the FBI probe that had uncovered this uh, uh, criminality that our leaders are engaged in, and um, yeah, I understand. But that's not present, you know, the Catholic Church and the whole scandal. You know, uh, pedophilia is an ancient art. Yeah, Sleary it, it is well, an ancient art. Sex it, trading is an ancient art. And, and it was, not I believe, art. It's uh, just a cr what they do. Witchcraft. Well, what, what I was. Slavery. Trying to draw, wrap in is uh, Ted Gunderson's research as uh, in his uh, FBI days. Yeah. Uh, now I, I I may be incorrect. It could be another FBI guy. Well, but he I, did Boys Town. He revealed. But he revealed. He revealed. He revealed top of all of but that. there was Santeria was involved in L.A. There was there was another um, FBI researcher who started yeah, out on the. A lot of whole department looked into this abduction of right, missing children. Right. And, and raping and Which, using, sacrificing kids. Right. And, and that, it turns out a lot of them go to Washington, D.C. So Dick Cheney and all these other knuckleheads can beat them up because they're yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Mr. Gunderson, uh, you know, really kind of uh, opened up that can of worms. And yeah. I, think, I think he paid for that. <laughs> and, well, you know, you know we for, for opening it. Someday, you all pay for that. The Lord sees our good work um, and God, you know, eventually you... You know, the devil's only going to be the devil and thinks he's yeah. God, but the God is God and the devil's the devil. So, the devil is, this is the devil's playground. So, so bringing it uh, closer to home, there was um, this period of time in the 1980s where children's faces were like mug shots put on milk cartons. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen this kid? Mm -hmm. right? Now, this was one of the most effective advertising campaigns um, that actually worked because what happened was is it raised so much consciousness but I, I want to go back to why this happened why were kids being put on milk cartons it, ha it goes to Westchester County in the early uh, 80s late 1970s and this would have been when uh, Ted Gunderson was really active, I believe. Yeah. All right. They have to During blackmail and control the politicians. Well, they way. well they have to harvest children somehow, and and yeah. and what what happened was is uh, now I may have the the stat mixed up. It could be three thousand kids in five years or five thousand kids in three years. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I got some numbers turned around here, but in any event, we're talking a lot of kids in not that many years went missing in Westchester County. Mm. And the thing is, is when they put these kids on milk cartons and this became part of the consciousness of, of being aware, well, first of all, you didn't let your kids stand out for the school bus anymore. You, you stood with them. Right. That was one big change. I mean, I used to go out, you know, when, when we were growing up in Rockland County, you know, dad and mom would just say, okay, kick us out, play hard. When you come back, be home by six and have dinner and you eat what's on your plate. You know, we had those kind of mores, right? We didn't worry about being abducted by... <laughs> people in white vans with um, uniforms resembling that of a police officer or some other authority. Authority, And this is what, what, what happened as a result of this awareness in the community is that people started seeing kids being abducted by people looking like they were, had authority in white vans. And this is going on to this day. Or flashers and don't take candy from strangers and right. stuff and perverts right. and whatnot. And, and this is all uh, part of the, the uh, human trafficking. And, and that human trafficking involves um, you know, white women being sold into sex slavery in, in Arab countries because Arabs like, like that, the ones that can afford it. And African and Eastern and, and European right, and right. American. It's an ongoing tragedy you know, but, throughout history. But, but what the, the more horrific part of all this is the satanic ritual abuse. And, right and and uh, Santeria uh, son of Sam. and voodoo yeah. and all of these all of these you know dark uh, practices uh, you know I don't even want to say dark arts you know, I, I, I think because I'm an artist and I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> don't want yeah, to don't want to it's is. funny how Newt Gingrich wanted to eliminate national endowment to the arts excuse me our own ambassador that uh, movies music theater uh, goes worldwide. And that's a saving grace of America. 
Well, you know, this is, I was involved um, in a native arts and basic education as a liaison between the uh, Seneca Nation and the New York State Department of Education in 1985. Oh, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a grant, which was called Native Arts and Basic Education, which basically what it, what it did Thank is you. it put native artisans who knew their culture, language, or craft into the public school systems that had native populations with uh, certification variants. In other words, they didn't need to have uh, the stamp of approval of a university or the state in order to go into the public schools and get paid to share their culture with their kids and the non-native um, kids who, you know, who school with them. Hallelujah. We want and, to research their language, too, if we can revive it and their culture. Yes. Well, well, that's the only boundary left is language mm -hmm. because the boundaries of the territories have been so um, uh, violated to this day. Um, anyway... What I learned is that our curriculum and our uh, national agenda for education is about mass production. And what we were challenging, and when I was set into this uh, uh, conference of 500 art teachers from across New York State, or maybe even 800 art teachers, and this panel that represented the um, New York State Board of Education going up to this guy Thomas Sobel, okay, what they were doing is they were presenting this program of um, uh, discipline-based art education, they called it. And what this was was California's solution to a budget problem. So what they did is they had the history teacher teaching art history, the math teacher teaching composition, geometry, and through the art, the art teacher is eliminated except for one class a week for art. And that's a crying shame. Um, we have what to is, teach they, music, art, and schools, and a lot of things um, that, are, that are basic for Studio health. art. Studio art. That's, that's all they gave the art teacher was like one day a week for studio art. Mm. And then aesthetics and art would be taught by the English teacher. So, so, but they, they had lots of fancy wording and all this, and I don't have a degree, and I'm, I'm sitting with, you know, five or 800 other art teachers, and this panel is presenting this thing, and, and, and you're going to love this. What they were, do you remember color forms? No. Well, it was, it was a popular thing in the 50s and 60s and early 70s where they, they had, you would get like this blank, sticky, you know, uh, plastic thing, and you'd have like tree cutouts, this cutouts, cloud cutouts, and then you'd make your little color form, you know, or a little doll that was a flat doll that you could put these, you know, clothes on and play, play. Okay. all right, it's called color forms, all right. right? This was their model for teaching art <laughs> so that it could be graded by anybody that's not an art teacher or an artist, you well, see. Well, it's like the bureaucrats, you know, and legislators that really aren't in touch with it. We need worker co-ops where the uh, worker has a say in in running the factory and taking the breaks because they're on the assembly that's Germany. line and they know how to work together as a team. Yeah, the, the machinists in any German factory have a lot of say to as, uh, uh, what happens in that factory for upgrades or, or modification. Yeah, and plus shareholder dividend profits yeah. would make them flourish like Mondragon in Spain and various examples of worker co-ops. Yeah. And, and the, getting back to the indigenous perspective of native people where we're a tribe. We're a family. We, we share the bounty of the hunt, and the chief is respected because he wants to make sure the woman and the children are fed and, you know, and that everyone's taken care of. And that's he gets organic respect versus being the brutal, I'm the boss, I'm the tough no, guy. I'm no, the I, I, I actually... You pay attention to me. That's the difference between a it, dictatorship or a democracy. And it's actually even, you, especially with the Northeast, uh, uh, I can't speak because I don't have uh, too much contact with the Western nations. I have some contact with the, the Diné and the Hopi. I spent time with them. Incidentally, but, Diné is Navajo. Navajo comes from Navajeros, which means knife in Mexican, and they, they carried knives, but so they called Navajero Navajo, but then the actual uh, uh, name of these people are Diné. That's right. And, um, but in, in the matriarchal societies of the Northeast, the eastern, northeastern woodlands peoples. And there's going to be a resurgence of matriarchal societies the, because now the chief, Mother Earth is coming forward and, and the fem divine goddess and mother is bringing forth a new paradigm of consciousness to yeah. all of humanity. So, so the chief was the representative of the clan mothers who made the decisions for the welfare of the, of the nation. 
So, so if the chief stepped out of line and did not communicate to the village or his people the will of the clan mothers, the clan mothers would set about a program of uh, dehorning him so he would lose his status with the warriors. Mm. So he had to behave. <laughs> he had to do the will of the clan mothers. There's now here's the wisdom. Balances authority versus majority. What we have now are the wolves guarding the hen house folks. And it started around Reaganomics. I think actually it started November 22nd in Dallas when Mr. Kennedy was shot. And, uh, you know, we have uh, this, uh, but, but I say economically around Reaganomics because they started really taxing the rich. You know, it was always like, you know, you know, America was good and built up and you could have the rags to riches American dream by working hard. And the more money you made, the more you were taxed. Correct. But starting with the Reaganomics thing, then Clinton especially, and then now, of course, what we got is out of control, so that the corporations, you know, are, are subsidized, and the working people have to pay, pay, pay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's uh, a, a program to uh, disempower the masses so that they don't have time to think about the uh, manipulations that go on or the criminalities that go on in, in the form of leaderships. Yeah, capitalism is good, but when it's out of control, it can't sustain itself. And we have to learn to go back to our roots of the native people and recognize uh, that, you know, it's really not left versus right or liberal versus conservative. It's right versus wrong. War is wrong. Torture is wrong. Pollution is wrong. You know, it's a universal maxim across the board, and all tribes know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are we are here and standing in, in solidarity.